Well, hey guys, and welcome to another plan with me. This video is inspired by my last video, which was all about how I tried the 12 week year system and I bombed at it. Why? Because it is a neurotypical planning system that did not fit my ADHD brain. So I will link that video up here somewhere so that you can check it out. But in today's video, what I wanted to do was take the learnings from that failure and move forward with them into a planning system that works better for me. And spoiler alert, this is actually a planning system that I used all last year. It worked just fine, but if you're anything like me, you jump from planning system to planning system, whether it works or not, because you get a little bored with it, and then you spiral into shame when it doesn't work. <laughs> But in today's video, I am going to break that cycle by taking what I learned about myself and what works for me in terms of productivity and applying it to the system that I already have so that I'm always enhancing it and resparkalizing it so it doesn't get boring and it continues to serve me in the way I need it to. By the way, the system that I generally do use and have been using for over a year is based in Notion, which I think is the most beautiful thing since sliced bread for ADHDers because you can mold it to be whatever you want it to be. So I'm gonna go back and resparkalize the template that I've been using that has worked for me. You guys have seen it before. If you're interested in it, I'm gonna link it below. But before we get into planning, I kinda wanna tell you about a conversation I had with my coach this weekend because it made me realize something about myself that I think you might be able to relate to. So the reason I had engaged this coach was to help me find clarity in my own business. I do this for my clients, but I can't do it for myself. So her job was to help me prioritize my business models so that they align with my energy. Cause I've talked about this a million times before, my energy can be really unpredictable. So I want a business that will give me a ton of flexibility. If you've been around here for a while, you know that my current business model is one-on-one -on -one coaching, group coaching. I have some digital products and courses specifically for ADHDers. And then I also do some brand work as well. And while I love all of those revenue streams, they don't all align energetically. So in my mind, I was very focused on the coaching piece and how I was going to scale that. My brain kept going to, you need to create a membership, you need to create a membership. So I started talking about that with my coach and we were about three sessions in and I'm like, that's it. The next time we chat, I'm going to have this structure all built out about what my membership was going to look like and it's going to be great. And for the next three weeks, I did absolutely nothing to move that idea forward. Now, one thing to know about me is once an idea clicks, I'm usually really good about moving forward with it. But because I have ADHD, if something doesn't click or it feels ambiguous or there's some reason why I'm holding back but I haven't identified it yet, then that is a big red flag to me. And that is exactly what we uncovered the next time I did talk to my coach. I threw up my hands and I said, you know, I did not do what I said I was gonna do. I did not map out my membership and I don't know why. And what I got absolutely crystal clear about is that I don't really want to do a membership right now. I might want to do one in the future, but right now that feels completely unaligned with my energy. And that may not sound like a big revelation to you, but it was to me. Very often I do things because I just think I should. And it's only been in recent years that I've realized that my procrastination is a red flag, that something's wrong and I need to understand what it is. I also had a really interesting revelation around my one-on-one -on -one coaching. I have always said that one-on-one -on -one coaching is not very scalable and is very energy intensive. That is true. So for some reason, my brain said we need to get away from one-on-one -on -one coaching. So that's why I was thinking about memberships and group coaching and that sort of thing. But in that session, I also uncovered the fact that one-on-one -on -one coaching is not the problem. Yes, it's energy intensive, but it also gives me a lot of energy. The one-on-one -on -one connection I have with my clients is probably the most foundational piece of my business that I feel connected and engaged to. I love one-on-one -on -one conversations because I am an introvert and that is where I shine. What I realized was that the drain of my energy was not coming from one-on-one -on -one clients. It was coming from the way I had structured my packages. And once I realized that, it was a very small, simple tweak that I needed to make to my packages. And suddenly I felt completely free. I could continue with my schedule of just coaching a couple of days a week and leaving the rest of my schedule open to do the thing that I love the most. And that is what brings me to the biggest revelation that I had on that call. And I almost feel weird saying this. I love doing video. I absolutely love showing up here 
recording videos asynchronously, which is really the perfect balance for me and my schedule. Two days a week where I'm on calls and my only job is to be present for my clients and the other days of the week are flowy and unstructured and I can be creative and honor my energy. And it was just like, I'm just gonna continue coaching one-on-one and do YouTube videos and my podcast. And I don't need to think about doing memberships and group cohorts and a bunch of elaborate courses. I can just do the things that I love in my business that honors my energy and be cool with that. Now, the one thing that came up the minute I had that revelation was my inner critic who was like, you're gonna be a YouTuber? You can't do that. You're too old, you're 52. That's what my inner critic sounds like. And you know how I got past it? I came back to my why, which I know is a very overused saying, but it is very true, especially if you have ADHD, you've got to know why you're doing something. You have to know why it's important. And for me, it's important because I have ADHD and because the world is not built for us and I am hell bent on learning how to thrive with my neurodiversity and showing others what's possible, especially at the ripe old age of 52. And once I reminded myself of that, it was like, who am I not to do this? This is what I have to do. So that crushed any imposter syndrome I had about that. And all of a sudden, I just felt giddy with excitement that I know exactly how I wanna show up my business, who I wanna show up for, and the medium that I wanna use. And I share that story with you because I want you to know the key to finding where you shine is to give yourself the permission to follow what feels good. Follow what works for your energy. Do things in a way that works for you, as opposed to constantly trying to fit yourself into a mold that somebody else has created like the 12 week year, you have to find what works for you. So I hope you enjoy my little TED talk. And now I'm gonna jump into Notion and show you how I'm gonna plan my march in a more ADHD friendly way with the clarity I have around my business and how I wanna move forward. So on that note, let's get into it. Before I get into how I'm planning March, I wanna take you back to the 12 week year template that I was using to illustrate why it wasn't working for me. And I wanna call out that there is the book, then there's the template that I use to follow the book. So part of this critique is the book and part of it is the template, just to be clear about that. The critique I had about the book was that the accelerated timelines stressed me out to the point where all I was focused on was checking the boxes and it didn't really matter what I was doing to achieve that goal. That is a problem. And it was exasperated by the template I used, which was entirely focused on checking boxes. As you'll see, the majority of this spread is all about boxes. And that in and of itself was very stressful for me. Now, what I did like about it was that these boxes, when they were all checked, gave you a visual representation of how far along you were. So I love that because as an adhd -er, very often when we're in the messy middle of a project, we don't take the time to realize how much progress we've made. And when we don't take that time, our inner critic can really come up and start derailing us, thinking I'm taking too much time with this. This is garbage. I'm not doing it right. But when you have this visual representation that you're 67% there, that's super helpful. So I would love to incorporate that going forward, but I haven't figured out how to do it yet. What I do know is that all of these check marks give me anxiety. And the other thing that I did like about the 12 week year structure that I already use is the weekly review. So at the end of the week, I had a template to review the progress I made that week. The problem is that one week was not long enough for me to accurately answer the questions that I had here. So the other learning that I'm taking here is that condensed timelines kind of stress me out a little bit. So I want to move away from that. So with all of that said, I think that this template is great for some, not for me. So if you've been around here for a minute, then you know that this is the weekly spread that I use as part of the template that I offer and it's linked it below. What I love about it is that it's visually pleasing and I love the colors and all of those things. Now let's come to the problem I was having. This is the weekly spread that I've been using and I've showed it to you before. I had been using a database for all my tasks but I couldn't find a way to visually represent those tasks in a way that made sense for my brain. So I moved to this format where I would just do a weekly spread and I would just have a bunch of check marks and that felt very minimal and clean to me. And it did work really well for one thing, to help me stay consistent. So every week I would start with a new weekly spread and I had content creation on Monday, recording on Tuesday, et cetera, et cetera. So as long as my weeks followed that flow, I could be really consistent with all of the things I needed to do in my business. The thing that it didn't really help me do was create time and space in my calendar to work on new projects and the goals that I had to move forward and grow in my business. The other thing that it didn't allow me to do was schedule tasks for the future. So 
let's say I had a dentist appointment next month that I wanted to put on my task list. I couldn't do that if I was only writing my to-dos for the week I was in. So what I decided to do was pick up a paper planner to record appointments in the future. But that would mean that I would actually have to remember to look at the paper planner, which very often I don't. So what I realized is that I had to come up with a solution where I could see my tasks in a calendar view that I could see just the week that I was working on, but also record things that were coming up in the future. And that brings me to the solution I've come up with based on a recent release from Notion. They've given us the ability to take a monthly calendar view and shrink it down week by week, which is exactly what my brain needs. So take a look at what I've got here. First of all, I took my goals out of this little toggle menu here and I dropped them right here so that I can see them as I'm going through my week. Because as far as I'm concerned, out of sight, out of mind. So I love that they're sitting right there on top of my weekly to-dos. So now I have got my weekly to-dos in a calendar format focused on one week and one week only with only the relevant information I need on it. And that is the task that needs to be done, whether or not it's done, and how long that task is going to take. So you'll see here 60, 60, and 30. Those are the tasks that I had on my to-do list for Monday. On Tuesday, I've got a 60, 90, 90, less than 15, and another 60-minute task. So I know that I can't add anything else to Tuesday. It's pretty much booked. On Wednesday, we're moving Airbnb. So I know that that's going to take a half day and I only have one other 90-minute task to get my groceries done, et cetera. So long story short, this spread works amazing for my brain. It's clear, it's concise, and I know exactly what I need to do every day of the week so that I can start to schedule in time to do tasks that will move these goals forward. So I share this system to inspire you to think about your own goals that maybe you've already started to poop out on. And maybe it's not that the goal is not achievable, but the systems that you were using were not supporting you and giving you the structure that your brain needed in order to follow through with them. So with that, how can you resparkalize those goals and think of new systems that might work better for your brain? And when if you have a hard time thinking about things like that, that's where an ADHD coach can get into your brain with you and help you create a system that works specifically for you. So I hope you thought that was helpful. If you want to try my template, it's linked below. And on that note, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.